What is up, disc golfers? Today on Iceberg TV, I'm gonna give you guys my complete guide to one-speed discs. I think the one-speed slot has exploded in popularity over the last four or five years. But prior to that, there were still good quality one-speeds on the market, and people just weren't throwing them. You would very rarely see a polecat in somebody's bag. You may once in a while see a Sonic because of Garrett Gerthy. And then you had a small sort of group of Castaplast players that were avidly promoting the Berg. But aside from that, you would very rarely see anyone with a Rattler or, you know, the Loft Discs Hydrogen, I would say was kind of a flop. People just weren't really throwing one speeds. So I've got six one speeds here. We'll go through them real quick and then I'll do my best to briefly explain them while I play a few holes here at Nevin Park. We've got a Halo Polecat. I'll link these in the description below. Cool custom stamp Halo Polecats. We've got the Doomsday Landmine. We've got the Castaplast K3 Berg. We've got the Bulldog from Gateway. I'm sure a lot of you guys have never even seen one of these before. We've got the MVP Glitch, the probably the hottest one speed on the market right now. I got this cool OTB Eclipse one. And we have last but not least, the Loft Discs Glow Hydrogen. Also, if you feel like you're trash at throwing one speeds, try the pinch grip. You just pinch these two fingers together and then fan grip the rest of your fingers and boom, you'll be able to throw one speeds, no problem. Glitch always goes nice and straight. Polecat. Nice and stable. And we'll do one bird. So we're gonna put one speeds into two categories. We have lid style one speeds. These are things like the Polecat, like the Glitch, that have a very sort of ultimate Frisbee style feel to them players who used to play ultimate frisbee would have a really easy transition into discs like this. And then we have non-lid style discs, which I think the Castaplast Berg falls within that category. It feels a lot more like a traditional golf disc, more so than an ultimate lid or a throw and catch disc. The biggest difference between the two types of one speeds is mostly not even going to have to do with the flight. It's mostly going to be the feel in hand. So if you used to play ultimate or used to like playing catch on the beach, you're probably gonna lean more towards those lid style discs. But if you never played ultimate, you don't really play catch on the beach, you're not really gonna like the feel of those and it's gonna take a lot of work to get used to the feel of those. So you're probably gonna wanna lean into things more like the Berg or the Landmine that don't feel as much like a typical throw and catch disc. And we have one more category I feel like I should cover is the dog disc category. So we have the Latitude 64 Bite and we have the Gateway Bulldog. I'm sure there's a few other ones, but this is, completely different from the rest. It's got this big sort of bulging shape on top, these big ribbed lines on the side, mega deep, and in my opinion, horribly uncomfortable in the hand, and it's also 185 grams. So it feels horrible in the hand, super uncomfortable, super heavy, and it's super overstable. That's about as good as I can do with the Bulldog. But you can see even had a huge skip at the end of the flight there. So as far as dog discs go, I think they're fun to throw, um, but that's all we're gonna do today as far as the dog disc category goes. I think the other categories are a little bit more popular. So we're gonna spend a little more time talking about those. All right, so the first direct comparison we're gonna do is the Glitch versus the Halo Polecat. You can see the Polecat has a little bit closer to a 90 degree angle on the way down here. The Glitch is slightly more rounded. Um, the biggest difference between these two discs is the Polecat feels in hand at least a slightly larger diameter. And these Polecats are typically closer to max weight and these are unavailable at max weight. So we'll throw the glitch. The glitches tend to be quite a bit more understable, straight and neutral, and the polecats, those halo ones, tend to be quite a bit more stable. So we'll throw the glitch and then we'll throw the polecat. New York Yankee that's straight to the right. That's one of the toughest things about one speeds is you really need to get used to throwing them. So we'll throw the polecat here. A little bit easier for me to throw because it is a bit heavier. So you can see, nice dead straight flight. Doesn't want to burn and turn, 
but kind of just wants to hold the line. Now the other two lid style one speeds we have are the landmine, which you can see is an extreme 90 degree angle. Now we have the loft discs hydrogen, which is even more rounded than the glitch. Now the hydrogen, especially these glow ones are gonna be quite a bit more stable than both of those. And this has that square feel, but a straight flight. And the one speeds can be so finicky, it really just comes down to whichever one feels the best in your hands. But you can see that hydrogen wants to sort of fade out at the end of the flight and has a little bit more stability to work with. Feels very uncomfortable in the hand. Now, one of the coolest things about these one speeds is that if you have bad form or you're making mistakes in your form, the disc may not tell you what to do to fix it, but it'll certainly let you know if you have form issues. I definitely like the pole cap more for these types of straight shots because you can just sort of force it straight and it'll have a little bit more integrity. And you can see it's, instead of wanting to like push on turn the whole way, it's gonna wanna push and then possibly fade. And then the strange thing about the Berg is it falls under the one speed category, but it's the polar opposite. The Berg will hide your mistakes and make you look good. And no matter how bad your form is, you can pretty much throw a Berg with success because it just has such a straight flight with all that crazy amount of torque resistance. So I love to take my Berg on these straight shots. And I know I can just trust it and throw it really hard. You can see, not superly overstable, but still stable, but super torque resist now. I was able to forehand that with a ton of power. So if your goal is to use a one speed to get better at disc golf and to improve your form and to work on your technique, you probably wanna go with the glitch or the pole cat. They're a little bit touchier. They'll point out your mistakes a little bit sooner. Um, if you like to have a one speed to use out on the course, that is one speed, domey, deep, pretty stable, the hydrogen is gonna be a good option. And if you want a one speed that's gonna help you immediately score better today, that is not gonna point out your mistakes, I mean, that K3 Berg is the top dog. And I know a lot of you guys will be using your one speeds to approach the basket. So we have two different options here. We have the King of Glide, the Glitch, and we have the King of No Glide, the Berg. When I'm approaching the basket and I'm really trying to shoot well, I wanna have a disc that has as little deviation as possible, regardless of how I throw it. And this glitch could potentially really get away from me. I put a little too much ante on it, it kind of overturns. But when we look at the Berg, it's gonna have a little bit more of a sh kind of point and shoot, doesn't really turn, doesn't really fade. So you can just put it right at your target and you're pretty much always gonna stay close to the basket. So the Berg will cover your mistakes and the glitch will expose your mistakes. And when it comes to these longer putter shots, you definitely want the air on the side of stability and glide. So you probably don't want to throw the glitch because it's going to expose your mistakes. If you throw too hard, too flat, it's going to put you way off course. And then the Berg has that controllability, but doesn't give you the distance. So that's where these other one speeds come in, like the hydrogen, the landmine and the pole cat. We can use them on these longer shots know that we have the stability to throw it hard enough to get the distance that we need. And we can trust that reliable fade at the end. It was gonna fade perfectly, hit the tree. But you could see how it was gonna go. It was already drifting from right to left. Now we have the pole cat, gonna follow a very similar flight. All right, guys, so I feel like I've gave you enough information to get started when it comes to one speeds. Um, we'll do one quick breakdown just so you guys can get one last look at the shape and the profile of each disc. Um, we'll start off with the glitch. Again, lightweight, lots of glide. If you throw it badly, it won't fly well for you. This disc will point out your mistakes. Take that as you will as a good thing or as a bad thing. If you're a tournament player, that's a bad thing. If you're trying to get better, it could be a good thing but the glitch really, really fun to throw is probably the biggest bonus of this disc. So it's kind of one of those things you like to have one in your bag, you throw your normal shot and then you're like, mm, let me just try and glitch this one. So that's kind of the fun part of the glitch. You just kind of keep one in the bag when you think you might be able to throw a good shot with it, you pull it out, you just use it for fun, but not a great tournament disc in my opinion. Next, we'll talk about the landmine here, board flat, feels quite comfortable for the forehand throws for me. A little bit more torque resistant than the glitch, but still has a reliable straight flight as long as you're able to release it flat. 
This disc, I have the world's hardest time throwing it flat because I don't think it feels very good in the hand with these 90 degree angles. It's like a straight up Pyrex lid. So not my favorite disc, not super fun to throw either. But if you struggle with the rounded one speeds, then you may like this guy. Next, we have the Loft Discs Hydrogen. This is definitely a step up in stability from most of the other discs that we've reviewed today. This was designed to be the straightest flying disc ever made. And I wouldn't say that it does necessarily that, especially in the glow plastic. But if you don't mind a deep throwing putter, if you have big hands or used to play Ultimate Frisbee, or you're just comfortable with deep discs, you're probably really going to like this one because it does have that little bit of added stability. So you can really crank on it. And if you throw it really hard and flat, it'll go straight. Or if you throw it really hard on hyzer, it'll flip up. But it's also another disc if you have bad form, not great for forehands, doesn't handle much off-axis torque, it will turn over on you and point out your mistakes, just like the glitch will. So it's kind of in between somewhere, like I was saying before. Now we have the Polecat, which I think the reason why this is a fan favorite is because it's not super duper deep, so it does still feel fairly comfortable in the hand but then it also has reliable stability where you can throw it hard and flat and it'll sort of drift to the right, or you can hyzer flip it, or on softer shots, it'll just hold whatever line you put it on. So you can put on Annie, it'll stay on Annie, throw it on hyzer. Without too much power, it'll stay on hyzer. And again, if you throw it flat, it'll stay fairly flat. Also, this Halo Star plastic obviously looks sick. And yeah, they have a big triples tournament coming up at the hardest course in Charlotte. So I'll link these discs in the description below. I'm not affiliated with this, but my friend is, so I want to show this disc off to support him as well. Now, the creme de la creme of one speeds. I know I'm going to get a lot of hate for this, but the Castaplast K3 Berg is the number one one speed on the market. You don't bag a one speed for something that's going to go far. You bag a one speed to have something that's going to do what you want it to do. And what the Berg is going to do is hold the line and then drop. So this, in my opinion, is the best upshot disc on the market. It's torque resistant, but not super overstable. So you can throw it really hard on a slight ante. It'll just hold a panning ante. This goes for forehand as well as backhand. I've been bagging this disc since 2018 and has never left my bag. I've got tournament aces on this disc. I got a bunch of casual aces. This is by far the best one speed, in my opinion, not only because it's fun to throw, but it's also gonna help you score better, beat your friends, and shoot higher rated rounds at tournaments. This is a disc that's going to hide your mistakes and the things that are wrong with the glitch, that little bit of too much glide, that little bit of whoopsie, I turned it too much, that's never gonna be an issue with the Berg. You're always gonna sort of be able to get up and down with confidence. And if you, you, know, you want to throw an Annie and you throw it flat by accident, it's just gonna go straight instead of annie and you're still gonna be close to the basket. So in my opinion, this is the best upshot disc ever made. I would recommend the K3 plastic. Um, this is like five or six years old now and I bought it used and it's still holding up great. No signs of like insane wear and tear. It's just a bit dipped down more than a normal Berg. Anyway, guys, big shout out to the sponsor of the channel, Berg's Disc Sports. We are almost out of V3s. We have a special going on right now, free ship for free shipping worldwide. You guys are watching Iceberg TV. I hope this one speed guide helped you and take care.